when the time comes for the total liquidation of ghetto, the people asked me to help. But I did not have a place. I was assigned to live in tiny little room. I could not take them there. But at this same moment, I mean, a miracle happened. The old major called me, he said, I have villa, you be my housekeeper. So when I did see the villa, I knew there is a place. And I knew that happened in the last minute. That is with God's blessing. You're caring for these 12 Jews it, that are a, being hidden by you in, the in, in this villa. Yes. One of those, one of the, the people you're hiding, What's who's that? pregnant, and of course a, a baby discovered crying and they're all dead. I told Ida, don't do anything. You see, you'll be free by the time your time will come to give birth. They listened to me. And two of the people also, uh, they live in Tarnopol, said to me, Irene, this villa was built by Jewish architect. There must be a hiding place. We start searching and we find it. In the villa, in the cellar, behind the coal chute was a little wooden wall. When you move the wall, expose an opening that lit underneath the ground to the garden. In the garden was a gazebo. And underneath the gazebo was a hiding place. Now all the while they're undiscovered. Yes. But then something happened that would change your life again. Well, when I was in town one day, and like from nowhere, there were SS every place, there were signs on every street corner saying, this town is Jew free, and whoever will help escape Jew, the sentence is dead. When I came back, I was so uh, shaken up that I forgot to close the door. Of the villa? Yes. Hmm. And when I was standing in the kitchen, four Jewish girls came out from the cellar to help me, as they usually did when I was alone. We did not even start conversation. The door opened, the major was standing right in front the of us. The Nazi major walks in, and the four Jewish girls are out there with you? Yes. What happened? I never forget. His eyes were big. His chin was shaking. He was, he was so angry. Then without saying one word, he turned around, walked to his room. And you thought that was it? And I thought that he's calling his friend the head of the Gestapo. So I ran after him. I kneeled down, I was kissing his hands, I was holding to his legs, I was praying and pleading. I did see that he was moved a little with my plea, but he said, why did you do it? Why? I said, nobody has right to kill and murder. You're not a murderer, you didn't kill anyone. Please forgive me, please. Oh. They are innocent people. He said to me, I'm old man. I have to have a time to compose myself. I will go to my office, and when I come back, I give my decision, but in the meantime, don't you dare to do anything stupid. When he left, I locked the door, I ran downstairs. They all were ready to run out. I could not let them go, because I didn't know if the major, in the meantime, doesn't talk to his friend, the Gestapo. So we made a quick decision. They will go and they need the gazebo. Hmm. And if in three days I will not come and get them, that means I am dead or arrested. Oh and at that time, they are on their own. He came about three hours later. Hmm. He was completely drunk. He passed me by. I did have to go and, and uh, face him. I needed to know. And uh, as I was standing in front of him, waiting for the decision of life or death, he pulled me on his lap. Mm. He said that uh, he will keep his, uh, my secret, but I have to be his, and his willingly. It was not easy, but mm. it was a small price to pay for so many lives. So I did have to endure it. He knew about the women. He didn't want to know who else was there, but he kept his secret.